Fisher came back from summer vacation to face the 18th ranked University of Rochester Yellow Jackets. They started their season with a 1-0 loss to this strong team. Adam Durst had five saves as Fisher was outshot 6-2. Next, the Cardinals participated in the Rochester Flower City Classic and first faced Cortland. In two tries, still no win for Fisher as the game ended in a 1-1 tie. Alex Salter scored Fisher's lone goal and on an assist from Luke's Luke Lennox. Finally, at 0-1-1, the Cardinals picked up their first win of the season against Oswego. Late in the first half, Matt Guinto scored off a free kick with two minutes left in the game. Luke Lennox came through with the game-securing goal. Fisher went on to win 2-0. Fisher's first home game was against Plattsburgh. The Plattsburgh Cardinals did their damage in the first half, scoring off a rebound and a free kick to lead 2-0. In the second half, Fisher rallied with a header goal by Luke Lennox from Andrew McIntosh, but fell short and lost 2-1. Fisher's next opponent was nationally ranked number four Hobart. Despite six saves from goalie Adam Durst, the Cardinals were outshot 3-8 and lost 2-0. Then Fisher picked up their second win of the season against St. Joseph's College 5-1. The scoring was abundant in this one. Brian Canty scored in the first half with a pass from Matt Guinto, followed by a goal by Sean Fischel. Things would continue in the second half. Freshman Lies Ordima scored two goals in a row to start his collegiate career, both assisted by Justin Brown. Both teams took advantage of penalty kicks. Fishers was scored by senior Steven Strauss to secure the lead at four. Most recently, the Cardinals goalie Adam Durst earned his second shutout of the year in a 1-0 win at home over Brockport. Matt Guinto scored the game's only goal in the 11th minute from an assist from Cristobal Martinez. Conference games have also yet to start for men's soccer, but Fisher now stands at 3-3-1. We have to take a break, but right after this, we'll have golf and volleyball. And welcome back to Fisher Sports Test. Now let's get right into the golf action. The men and women's golf teams both traveled to St. Lawrence University to start off their seasons at the St. Lawrence Invitational. And after two days of play, the men's team took home a second place finish with a team score of 598, as the women took home sixth place with a team total of 770. On the men's side, Waterloo University of Canada were just five shots ahead of the Cardinals to grab the top spot, and the host St. Lawrence women's team took the first place finish with a 636 team score. Eric Kohler finished top among the Cardinals with an individual score of 148 over two days, and Alex Battle was top amongst the Lady Cardinals with a two-day score of 163. And also in the golf world here at Fisher, the two teams took part in the Empire 8 Championship at Blue Heron Hills in Macedon, New York. The men took home the gold as they finished in first place with a team score of 603, and the women also fared well as they brought home a third place finish with a team score of 807. Taking first on the women's side of things was Nazareth College with Ithaca bringing home second place. And now from the green fairways to the cold hard hardwood, Sloan's going to take us through Fisher Volleyball. The volleyball team started off their season going 3-1 at the Gettysburg Invitational. Over the weekend, they defeated Northland, Gallaudet, and Messiah. Their one loss came in three sets to Carnegie Mellon. Becca Smith led the team with 54 digs and tied for the team lead in 32 kills in the four games. Her best match came in Fisher's win over Messiah, when she finished with 16 digs and 14 kills. Amy Street finished with the team-high 20 service aces and added 19 digs and 9 assists. Sydney Candifer led the Cardinals with 12 blocks over the four-match span, while also posting a team-high 305 hitting percentage on 32 kills. The Cardinals were not as successful in their next tournament, the Ithaca Bomber Invitational. Over the weekend, they finished with a 1-3 record with losses to Widener, Oneonta, and RIT. Their one win was against Brockport. In the loss to Widener, Cindy Candifer led the Cardinals with 22 digs and 13 kills, while freshman Jenna Rath added a career-high 12 digs. In a four-set loss to RIT, Laura Swash had eight kills and three blocks. Elena Braun added seven kills, four service aces, and 12 digs, while Jenna Waldron had a team-high 14 digs. 
And we have to take a quick break, but right after this, we'll have women's tennis and also be joined by Courier Sports editor Paul Williams. So stay with us. And now we're back here on Fisher Sports Success, first edition of the semester with a look at women's tennis. The first match of the season for the women came against SUNY Oswego. The Cardinals did not hold back and showed up to play as they defeated Oswego 6-3. Fisher won in all three doubles matches and earned points in first, second, and sixth singles thanks to Elena Vale, Katie Barlow, and Jordan Brungard. And after taking down SUNY Oswego, the team took to the R RPI Invitational Tournament. The ladies grabbed 17 points in the first day of the tournament, and SUNY New Paltz led the way after day one with 15 team points. Laura Hale, Elena Vall, Katie Barlow, and Caitlin Smith each won their matches, and on day two, it was time for the doubles matches, one of Fisher's strongholds. The women took to the courts and did not hold back once again as they ended up taking home second place with 14 total points. New Paltz came in first with 21. Renslayer and Hartwick both tallied 10 points and tied for third place overall. And after the RPI invite, the women hosted Alfred University in their first conference matchup. The women began with two wins for Fisher in the doubles and they continued through, throughout taking five out of the six doubles matches. Three of the women, including Laura Hale, won both of their matches. And in the end, the St. John Fisher College Cardinals brought home another victory, tallying a final of 7-2 over the Alfred U. Saxons. And as the women's tennis team continued on a roll, they took to the road to face Elmira College's soaring Eagles. There wasn't much to defend against as the women put up a 9-0 overall victory, first sweeping the doubles matches and then cruising on through the singles competition. The double scores went to 8-1, 8-4, and 8-6. This victory gave the Cardinals a three-game win streak. And again, after Elmira, the women's team took on RIT in another conference battle. This one, unlike the others before, went right down to the wire and became a heart-wrenching loss for the Lady Cardinals. Fisher won two of the three doubles matches, while four of the six singles matches went to three sets right down to the wire. In the end, Elena Vall and Caitlin Smith pulled out tough wins, but the cards came up one win short and fell to RIT, the final 5-4. And then the women also faced William Smith College in their latest string of games, coming into the matches with a record of 3-2. The Cardinals tallied up their second loss in a row, the final score of this faceoff being 7-2 in favor of William Smith. Elena Vall remained undefeated as a team Fisher could not muster up much more in the singles and doubles matches. The women also went on to host Stevens Institute of Technology later in the week in another conference battle. And to no surprise, Elena Vall continued to dominate as she won 6-0, 6-4 over Nicole Portner of Stevens, and she also helped get a win in a doubles match. However, the Cardinals still could not find a way to capitalize on opportunities as they fell to the Ducks 6-3. And in their latest match, the women's tennis team faced the college at Brockport in the non-conference matchup, Fisher, Fisher came out on top 6-3 to three and make their record 4-3 and three on the season as Fisher swept the doubles to open the match and then won the first three singles competitions. After this match, Fisher will take a break and send two members of the team, Hale and Vaughn, both to the ITAs in Geneva. And now, after all those matchups, we'll take a look at the Empire 8 standings for women's tennis. So here they are. At the top of the Empire 8 is Stevens Tech, who is 4-0. Ithaca also is tied for first. Then it goes RIT third, Naz fourth. Fisher comes in at fifth. Alfred at sixth, along with Hartwick and Elmira and Utica, rounding out the bottom of the E8 standings. And now Sloan and I are joined in the studio by Courier Sports Editor and Analyst Paul Williams, to take us through the fall sports season.